Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrading.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody's having a great uh, weekend. It's raining. It's about to snow. Welcome to New Jersey. Uh, but hopefully you guys are alive, right? Hopefully you guys are alive and you're watching this. It means you're breathing, you're alive, somebody loves you. Life is good, right? This whole money trading obsession that everybody needs to to do or you know within the first 15 minutes of trying it uh and if they fail they, they feel like it's the end of the world that's all nonsense it's all about collecting and sharing moments guys that's that's the name of the game as i appreciate my kids getting older and older now it's really kind of depressing that you know 11 and a half years ago my first child was born and now they're kind of going into almost like middle school and it's, times flies so fast that if you don't really take a step back and really appreciate the little moments in life, life's going to pass you by. And all these things about trying to be a professional trader, trying to be, you know, this, this larger than life character in, in, in your mind, th these are all great aspirations. Uh, they're great goals to have, all that good stuff. But if you don't scale back and really appreciate what you have instead of what you want, you know, you're really going to regret it as you get older. So hopefully you guys are, are really in a position in life uh, emotionally uh, that you can really appreciate what you have and not what you want. So let's get to the aspect, right, of trading. Okay, so, I, you know, I, I hear this all the time, and especially because of social media, you hear it much, much more. And you hear traders talking about they're going to do, I'll do anything to succeed, right? I'll do anything to succeed. I'll work, I'll use, I'm going to, I'm going to use the sarcastic word. I'm going to study the social media word. I'm going to study. I'm going to do whatever it takes necessary to become a professional trader because that's my dream. That's my goal. Uh, that's all I want to do. Right. And the problem with that, all that is not that you want it. The problem with that is most traders, because we are in such a very, very fast moving society, instant gratification society. Um, excitable society, emotion elevated society that most traders will continue to be their worst enemy. Okay. And for all you guys who've been watching, you know, these videos, uh, especially on the weekend updates, you kind of know that what's great about the weekend updates, you can always go back to the prior week and see exactly uh, what I was thinking, what my mindset was and how the week played out. Okay. And you know, usually pretty, pretty on the ball of how things are going to play out. And if you remember last week, we started talking about, and it wasn't the first time we talked about this, but we talked about how retail is always the one who gets, you know, gets screwed basically, right? They're the, always the ones in the front lines. They're the pawns. And we talked about Tesla last week, right? And we talked about the idea of the fear of missing out on Tesla and that, you know, you just needed to be right. You needed to, to be ahead of the curb. You needed to be in the right stock at the right time, the hot stock, right? The hot stock. And we talked about the, you know, the, the reality of retail is always the last to know. And when institutions and professional traders are loading up, not necessarily loading up, but just trading the stock at technical levels, okay? Retail is going in really, really levels that they, you couldn't even, even, even comprehend if you're a professional trader. And at the end of the day, it always ends up exactly the same way, right? It doesn't, make, you know, it doesn't make a difference what stock it is. It's going to end in the same way. Unfortunately, new traders, they don't learn their lesson, okay? And they continue to do the same thing over and over again. In the previous week, you know, I talked about this other little stock, ATIS. It's going, it's going, it's going. It's going to be the next one to go and it dies. So it doesn't make a difference of what stock you're trading. The reality is if you put yourself in a, continue to put yourself in a position that all you're doing is self-sabotaging yourself, you really have to ask yourself a very fair question. Well, what the hell is the point of all this, right? How long can I do this or attempt to do this and continually do the same thing over and over again and expect to get the same results? 
And again, it's, it's, a, it's a revolving door of new traders every single week, okay? You might not see it, personally experience it, but you're gonna see a revolving door of traders every single week. So for example, when I was trading, uh, when I was trading in generic years ago, you know, this is 99, 2000, 2001, this was a, you know, a really, really aggressive market, the internet, the dot-com, and we still saw a, you know, a really aggressive revolving door of new traders. I constantly saw new faces in our office, and I couldn't figure out why there were so many people leaving. I understand why so many people were coming. I just couldn't understand why so many people were leaving. And you know, as every new generation happens, as every new start stock symbol happens, the same common denominator is there. The traders, the new traders that are going to be quote unquote aspiring traders are going to continually shoot themselves in the foot. So again, new stock, right? Same thing. And you know, again, I'm not talking to the professional trader, okay? If you've been trading seven, 10, 12, 15, 20 years, this is not for you. You know your risk, right? You know your risk. Who am I to tell another adult, if you wanna buy a stock at 20, right, with a $2 risk, God bless. I'm talking about to the new trader, okay? I, I don't, I don't market to the new trader. I'll help out the new trader. I'll fully really put themselves, I, I really try to put the new trader in a position to succeed, but I don't market to the new trader. I don't, I don't want the new trader be, because the new trader majority, the ma new trader mindset is I have to figure things out yesterday or I'm a failure. And with this new generation of stock symbols, not, you know, not traders, you're going to see the same thing over and over again. And traders are constantly you know, bombarded with the idea that the hottest, the sexiest, the biggest moving stocks are the way to go. And the worst thing that could possibly happen to, to again, to the new trader, I'm not talking about to the experienced trader, the worst thing that could possibly happen to a new trader, you know, chasing one of these stocks up, that you actually make money, okay? It's the absolute worst thing because what's gonna happen is you're gonna think it's normal, okay? And the problem with thinking something is normal when the reality it's not, okay, is you're gonna give it back. It's like going to the casino and your first time gambling, you make $1,000, $500, $300, whatever the case may be. All of a sudden in your mind, you think this is normal. The problem is if you really go back to casino edge versus the player edge, you're gonna see the casino is gonna win nine and a half out of 10 times. And the problem with the new trader making money on one of these plays, okay, is they're gonna think it's normal, they're gonna go back, and in time, it might not happen in the next trade, it might not happen in the trade after that, but in time, you're gonna wind up on tilt. It's just the reality. When you have a vehicle, okay, and again, let's just, it could be any symbol, but let's just use BPTH this week, right? It's you know, a crazy move, going from $2 to 70, okay? I just wanna know, just as somebody who, who's been doing this for a very long time, I understand buying it here. Okay, I get it. You know, you want to buy it here, fine. You know, I understand you want to buy it here, that's fine. Because it, again, at least if you're a professional trader, you have a distribution channel here. You have a distribution channel here. You have data points that you could go back full of digestion points that you can say, okay, if it takes out this level, I want to get long. If it fails, I have a very definitive stop over the previous, below the previous uh, rising candle. I get that part. But what, what I don't understand, and I'll never understand because I never put myself in a situation like that, is for all you guys who are honestly giving this a really good shot, right? And you say, I want to be a trader. I want to do this for 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Now, how long ever you want to do this? My underst understanding is still to the point of how can you put your money, okay? And again, you guys are all grown up, so you can do whatever you want. This is just me thinking out loud. How can you justify putting your money on the line here or here or here or you know this is already this is pluto to me this is you know, this is this is saturn this is mars I, I don't even forget about it up here how do you justify putting your money here without the ra without really fully understanding the ramifications and understanding this is a hundred years of data of traders aspiring traders chasing stocks all over the place again i'm not even talking about you guys I and mean, i've seen so many tragedies of these things shorting these things on the way out, people blow out their accounts, blah, 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 I learned my lesson. You shouldn't be in these things, okay? If you're a new trader, you shouldn't be in these things. If you're trading less than three years, you shouldn't be in these things. These are the most aggressive, aggressive, average true range wife 
husband marriage killers that you're ever going to come across, okay? If you're a professional trader, you get it. You know the risk. You get it, right? You're smart. You've been through it. You know what you're up against. You know what's going to happen if you're wrong. You get it. It's the new guy. It's the new girl, right? It's, it's the new trader who's been trading for three years, two years, one year, and you're saying to yourself, well, I can't trade Tesla because it's so crazy. I can't trade Amazon because it's so nuts. I can't trade Netflix because it's so crazy, but I'm willing to buy a stock that just went from two to 17 to 25 to 40 to 60 to $75 a share. And if you don't see something wrong with that, okay, again, if you don't really acknowledge that something's wrong with that, there's nothing that you could learn or quote unquote, you, you know, borrow the word social media study, okay, that is ever going to put you in a position for longevity. It's the fact. You don't have to agree with what I'm saying, but you know I'm right, okay? You know I'm right. For all you guys who had great success with a stock like a BPTH, I'm not even talking about this one specific. Is it, you see the same pattern going every single week, every single year with the hot stock of the day. So for all you guys who are sitting there and, and really saying, I'll do anything to be a professional trader, I will study my ass off. I will do anything. I will look at charts. I will back test. And then the next, the soon as you possibly get that first opportunity to trade, I mean, I use that word loosely, to trade a stock that's just gone from two to eight to 12 to 25 to 30 to 40 to 60 to $75 a share. I just want to know what is your plan B? Okay. Because plan A is obviously not working. Again, you could turn around and say, Dan, you don't know what you're talking about. I did this. I, okay, I don't need to. It doesn't affect my life. I'm speaking to the trader who emails me 30 times a week and says, well, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I bought the stock at nine. It went to 12 and now it's at six. Just listen to what you're saying. Take a step back and listen to what you're saying and then really think about, you know, really think about break down your words. And again, trading is all about methodical, boring, right? Methodical, boring um, process, predictability, right? High probability, defending, defending your capital like it would be your children, okay? Putting yourself in a position that you're going to trade 20, 30 years from now if that's the case. But unfortunately, people don't look at it that way. They're looking at it as the hot stock of the day. I have to get in. I know it's going to go higher because somebody told me it's going to go higher, right? I'm buying it at the high of the day, up 850% of the day. And then 15 minutes later, when I sell it down six in 30 seconds, I'm trying to figure out what went wrong, right? It's your wake-up call, okay? Again, you're all adults. You're all allowed to do whatever you want from your money. But at the same time, then you can't come to another adult, another human being and say, I don't understand what I did wrong. It's my luck. How come I bought the top? Well, eventually, that's that's what you know. That's what the market universe does. It's going to single out. It's going to really weed everybody who doesn't really have a grasp of what they're doing, and they're going to make them go away. It's like that scene. One of my favorite movies is Rounders, right? One of my favorite with um, Matt Damon, and he tells his girlfriend at the time when she's talking about poker as luck versus a game of skill, and Matt Damon, and I'm paraphrasing. You know, asked her, well, why do you think the same 10 guys always make the final table? Okay. Trading is exactly the same thing. If you notice, the professional traders that survive 10, 15, 20, 30 years, they found their edge, right? Or they're working on their edge, or they're constantly trying to improve their edge. They're not going to go out and put their money on the line on something that they don't have complete control of, okay? And when somebody looks at me and says, wow, Dan, I can't believe you're saying that because you trade the most aggressive stocks in the market. What the, the, the most ironic part about that statement is, even though like a Tesla, a Netflix, an Amazon, uh, you know, a NVIDIA, a Roku, a Square, yes, they're very, very aggressive, but they're completely controllable because again, the majority of these trading vehicles are not representing retail. And that's the key. So when you have a monster option, option sweep of half a million dollars, a million dollars, $2 million, $3 million on a single sweep, you're going to see aggressive institutional buyers come in right after that. And especially when it confirms a pivot, it's going to explode. It's going to really, really fly compared to Joe Blow with a thousand dollar account trying to make, you know, trying to make a move that the stock's already up 300% to another guy that has a $2,000 account. And you're in the process of jumping over each other with two $3,000 accounts. This is all retail. And at the end of the day, as we talked about in last week's video, the retail gets slaughtered every single time. So 
if you want to be a professional trader and, and you know if that that's really really a goal i mean at some point you have to wake up i mean it really has to wake you really really have to wake up and everybody uses the word trade your plan plan your trade what is your plan like what is your plan right what is your plan here what are you trying to accomplish here we have a macro universe of stocks very very aggressive for the most part upward bias aggressive bias bull market for the last X amount of years, right? What is your plan with this? Do you realize if you close your eyes, right? If you close your eyes on an uptrending stock on beta, right? Just close your eyes and, and just bought the stock at the high of the day, you would have a higher, you would have a, a completely higher win rate than buying and, and then trading something like this on, on, on the most part. Just think about that logically. I would never advise anybody to do so, but that's kind of the point. And, you know, at, at, at some point in your career, guys, and, and I say this and we'll kind of move on from here. You know, when you're looking at the market, okay, and it's something that you want to do for a living, again, you don't need to agree with what I'm saying. You could have made money in this thing uh, or this thing or any other thing that looks like this, right? Over the last several months, whatever the case, you're an idiot. Yeah, I know I'm an idiot. Everybody understands that. I'm an idiot. I'm the king of the idiots. But again, I don't want to hear about it three weeks after that you learn your lesson. You don't want to hear about it. This is right in front of you. If you, if you can't see it yet in front of your eyes that you're wrong, and your approach to the market, I can't even call it a process, but if your approach to the market is this, then your approach to the market is highly flawed. And at some point, you have to take personal responsibility and wake up because if you know if you don't soon, there's not going to be much to talk about. So hopefully you guys, you know, if you made money in these things, God bless. If you lost money in these things, I hope you finally realize what you're doing wrong because again if you continue to do so it's just game over it's just not an opinion uh it's a fact so let's talk about the market all right let's talk about the market uh we talked about last week's video uh the potential not that it was going to happen the potential of a roundabout top and it played out that way for the most part okay you can see it here three days in a row four days in a row five days in a row of lower highs and lower lows. We saw that, right? So we got the back test and we didn't get the back test quite to the levels that I wanted, okay? Um, maybe we'll do that on Monday, although and you'll, we'll talk about this in a few minutes. There are some really good setups here on the long side. But what I what I do like, what I, what I noticed here on this back test here, that the market was still very, very tradable on both sides, okay? When you're coming from levels of quote unquote a V bottom, okay, and you're putting on a roundabout top, again, something we talked about over and over again, you're still going to see uh, periods in the market, periods in the day that you're going to have demonstrating weakness and demonstrating strength. So a lot of times new traders will look at the indexes down two, 300 points and still notice that majority of the stocks are not breaking down, okay? Or, or they're not breaking down to levels that, that are deemed shortable. They might be going down, but there's no advantage to, you know, to the downside. And what we saw in the last couple of days were you're finally, you saw that technical damage occur. If you've been watching these videos for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about this 171.76 level, what was the line in the sand in the queues. And on Thursday, okay, we closed below that, which basically... Uh, triggered a sell signal, a macro, a macro sell signal in the market. And what happened was on Friday, and, and this is kind of where you adapt as a professional trader, what happened on Friday was 90%, more than that, 90, probably 99% of my watch list got completely blown up, right? Everything gapped down. And the only problem Thursday into Friday session, I didn't want to get short because how many times have we seen technical damage, especially coming from higher levels, occur only to the next day for the market to gap up again and squeeze right back up? So, you know, as much as I, I saw the sell signal, I said to myself, you know what, I just don't want to take that chance. Uh, this last past week has been a really, really good aggressive week. Uh, I didn't want to take that chance. So what happened Friday is everything gapped down. The only thing that didn't gap down was Tesla, right? Only thing that didn't gap down was Tesla. Uh, so our watch list got completely blown up. Uh, the value of the day, at least for the morning session, got completely blown up. Now, here's the problem. This is kind of where we really dissect the difference between somebody who's chasing something up 800% of the day or somebody who's been doing this for a very long time waiting for their value. What happened on Friday, for the most part, and again, well, you know, there were some pivots and some pretty decent pivots, and Tesla, again, is still the greatest stock ever. But... 
the difference between a professional trader and somebody who is, let's be honest, the word is chasing, okay? The net next hot stock, the professional trader doesn't need to trade, okay? So the personality and the thinking is from the, from the aspiring traders, let's finish Friday off strong. Let's get it. The professional traders sit in there and say, well, it's Friday. Let's see what we got. Right? It's just the reality. And the two statements, you can see clearly the two statements, one is excitable, right? One is excitable. One is anticipated. Okay. These are all levels of emotional rise. Okay. These are all things that professional traders want to completely remove, right? Because when you're anticipating and you're forecasting, right? And you're predicting and you're sensationalizing your mind, usually bad things are going to happen. Okay. A professional trader's approach every single day is, well, I have my game plan. I have my sentiment. Um, I have my opinion. I just need to wait for confirmation. That com confirmation comes today. Great. That confirmation doesn't come today. You know what? Have a great weekend. I'll see you all on Monday. And this is the mindset that you have to get. You can't teach that. Okay. You can't teach that. Uh, experience is a major part of trading. Talent will get you so far. Okay. If you're a talent and you have a natural grasp of trading, that'll be great as long as you don't do anything to yourself in the process for you to gain that experience. Experience plus talent is an amazing trader. I don't have any talent, okay? I have no talent at all. I'm the king of the idiots. But for somebody who picks something up very, very quickly, it takes me much longer to pick up the same thing. So experience is driving me more than talent. And my experience has told me is you don't trade because the market's open, you trade because you have value. And Friday, we saw 99% of the watch list blown up no value left in the market. And by the way, we still didn't see any fear to get the market even lower to the levels that it needed to be. So we had a choice. You know, We had a very, very specific choice, either sit there and participate in stupidity and D-rated you know, setups and G-rated setups, or we wait for our stocks, see if they confirm, and you know, hope the volume is enough. Now, what we saw on Friday in the beginning of the morning we started seeing very contracting channels. That's a very big no-no, especially if you're trading ranges, right? There's not enough meat on the bone. What we saw Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were monster, monster ranges, especially Tesla. Tesla, just phenomenal trading uh, this week in Tesla to the short side, uh, to the long side in the, la in the last couple of days. So Tesla continues to be just a, a phenomenal trading vehicle. Uh, but the, the, the question we had was, was there going to be enough juice, right? Was there going to be enough juice for us to kind of manufacture a run? Again, everybody wants to quote unquote, kill it and bank all these, you know, awesome keywords, the carrot dangling on social media keywords, right? Nobody, nobody, no, no professional user, trader uses these words. I'm, I'm telling you as, as, as the day is, is long. So the only problem was to see how much value we had left in the day. And was there going to be enough ranges for us to kind of manufacture a run? And when you look at the pivots for the day, uh, you look for the pivots of the day. And again, again, like I tell everybody, we don't pick and choose these things. Like, you know, we, we you know, th these are the pivots for the day. You can, you can see it. This is the, the stock twits feed. This is the same thing that goes into the Twitter feed. This is the night before, right? This is the night before, and this is the new day. So this is how the day started out, right? There's no, excuse me, there's no picking and choosing. So we put these all pre-market and we wrote uh, 73.30, 73 on Tesla. If it builds below, it could flush. You know what? It never reached that point. So this one was off the list. Uh, this was my first trade of the day. I actually got caught. I didn't get caught, but um, I shorted Netflix. Okay. I shorted Netflix through this level. It went down like 50, 60 cents and the buyers came back in pretty quickly. So I lost about 75, 80 cents in the trade. No big deal. And then I shorted it on the remount. Okay. Once it came back the right way. And again, when you're trading prior to 10 o'clock, you have to understand these channels are much more aggressive with, with the, the, the biggest uh, potential for aggressive candles, but they're also going to be the biggest potential to get caught as well. So I, I try to tell, especially newer traders who are trading pivots, kind of avoid, you know, before the 10 o'clock candle turn. Obviously, if you're a seasoned pro, uh, if you know what you're doing, you can handle the risk. It's not a big deal losing a buck in your first trade because you know you'll, you'll have the capabilities of making it back uh, after the 10 o'clock turn. So I reshorted Netflix on the remount. Uh, it came back in. It went down like $1.60, $1.50 or so. So I got back pretty much all my money. Uh, this so forth and so on. So that was fine. And then the market got slow. 
really, really slow. So I started sitting there and go, oh, okay, well, let's see what we got here. So Costco, uh, again, Costco wasn't you know, a big move at all. Um, I, I wasn't even watching Costco, but we talked about this pre-market, if it can start building above this 2840, and it kind of just sat there the whole range. I actually still like it for Monday. If you look how tight this channel is, it looks pretty good. Uh, big lot, again, retailers came up some pretty decent uh, pretty decent earnings. Uh, big lot, 3620 build. If it could reclaim, it could go. If you look at big lot, uh, again, here's the 3620, right? Here's the 36, uh, what was it, 3620? Here's the 3620, and it went to like 3730, so dollar move on a $30 stock. Again, if you took the trade, great job. It's not really my thing, but God bless. Who, again, who am I to say with the, the trade? Uh, everybody has different levels of comfortability. And this is kind of where we started the wait. Like, once you know I have Costco and big on kind of on, on my list, you kind of know that the value and everything else is kind of diminishing. So we had a wait. This never triggered, right? This never triggered. And then finally came Facebook, right? Here finally came Facebook. And Facebook basically was a big buyer. And this is where we, we really started talking about uh, option sweeps. And these option sweeps have been a godsend. And, you know, the, a big buyer came in uh, out of the money calls on the Facebook, um, on the Facebook 175 Aprils, and you can see it. I, you know, I tweeted out, uh, put in the live webinar. It, all it needs to do is take out the 68. Uh, all it needs to do is take out the 6815 level. That was right over here. Uh, right over what was it? 60, yeah, 6815 level, and it built, started building above the 6815 level, and the stock went to almost 170. Uh, good job for you guys who caught that as well. Uh, Netflix, you know, Netflix, again, you can see what 340 is the level. If we could reclaim that, can give a push. Again, here's Netflix. Uh, here's the Netflix. Here's the 348 right here. It reclaimed the, oh, excuse me, right here, 348 right here. And then towards the end of the day, again, I was already done by the day, by the time this happened. But again, a pivot is a pivot, a pivot. It doesn't make a difference if I'm in the stock or not. It's going to go, right? So 348, uh, 348, you know, went to like 350. You know, it looks, actually looks pretty decent for uh, Monday. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, so here is, here is the trade. Um, again, so here is the trade. Um, you know, again, I was pretty much mindset that I was going to be done for the day. It was Friday. I was exhausted. I was pretty pleased with the week, but then again, Tesla came along, right? Tesla came along and I put this in the private, uh, Twitter feed, obviously in the live webinar and stock to feed Tesla 280. If it reclaims strong build, this thing can go. And again, guys, this, this is why I say this is the best stock ever. I mean, this is really, I, I really thought, you know, during 2003, 2004, the Taser was the greatest stock ever until I met a Tesla. So here is the highest supply, right? Here's this highest supply here, uh, 280, okay? And once it built, started building through 280, uh, big, big push. I mean, really good push here, almost a $3 push. And then the stock came back in and Citron, came out with their comments later in the day. Again, at this point, I was already done. This was right after three o'clock. But again, as long as you sit there and wait and patient and don't deviate from your process and don't prostitute your process and don't have uh, every intention of self-sabotaging your things, good things are gonna happen because technically that's what you expect from these charts. And when you believe in technical analysis and you believe that the theory of stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, you're going to usually see what you expect out of these trades and Tesla again continues to be uh, just a really really uh, great stock and then you know slowly but surely here's some just people uh, tweeting into the stock twits here uh, Roku big big move on Roku uh, needs to reclaim uh, 79 90 71 to go futures get better uh, and Roku just continues to be a monster this really does and here is the 70 uh, 70 90 right 70 90 71 area when right to supply at 72.21. Again, all you need to do is just wait for these things to get better. Uh, Amazon, towards the end of the day here, uh, Amazon 16.16, 16.17 needs to build. Uh, and again, you wait, you wait, you wait. Here's 16, right? Here's 16 right here, uh, 16 right here. And stock club went as high as the 16.23, flagging for Monday session as well. So again, guys, you can see here, nobody's trying to trick you, right? And this is technical analysis. Nobody's, you know, nobody's trying to, uh, cherry pick anything. This is what this is what we're doing. I mean, this is we're trading literally the same stocks every single day. Okay, and there's a reason for that. They're very, very highly predictable. Okay, institutional participation is represented um, aggressively. 
and retail is not, okay? Retail, while retail is chasing this, right? You're getting orderly moves in this. You're getting orderly moves in this. Now, again, sometimes a stock will go up 30, 40 cents and then come back in. You have no choice to kind of use break even as a stop. But the moral of the story is you're in control of your trading, okay? You know exactly what you want. You're participating with institutional bias and you are trading because the market's giving you value not because the market is open. So guys, my biggest advice to new traders, if you wanna do this for a living, just smarten up. Again, Meyer Hoffman used to say that the greatest piece of advice he told me years ago, okay? He didn't, you know, he didn't show me the, 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 you know, the, the, whole, the holy grail of trailing. The biggest advice he always told me was, Dan, just don't trade like a putz. That's it, don't trade like a putz. For all you guys who are joining us uh, this week via the live webinar, uh, Morning Strategy starts up at 9.05. Uh, Eastern time, and for all you guys who are joining us on the live uh, on the live Twitter feed, uh, they start going into you know into the channel roughly around the same time. So, guys, have an awesome weekend. You're blessed. You're alive. Somebody loves you. And, and again, it's all about the small moments in life that make things worth it. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.